Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to talk about how GMAT scores your test. Now, if you've been asking questions like, if I get 15 out of 31 questions correct on math, then what would be my score? And nobody has been able to tell you. It is because GMAT algorithm is computer adaptive algorithm. If somebody has been telling you that the first 10 questions are more important in the test than the rest of the questions, then they are also alluding to this thing called computer adaptive scoring in GMAT. And today we are going to talk about what does it look like and how does the algorithm work. Now I have to warn you that nobody really knows how GMAT scoring algorithm really works. What I'm going to tell you is an approximation of that. However, I'm pretty sure that after you go through this, video you would have a decent understanding of how the computer adaptive scoring works in general and in the end we will talk about what is a good test strategy when you are taking GMAT does the first 10 questions matter more than the last 10 questions and should that affect how much time you spend on each GMAT question and things like that and before we move forward if you like this video and find it helpful please do not forget to press that like button and subscribe to my channel it will be of tremendous does help to me. Let's get started understanding how computer adaptive scoring works with the help of a graph. On the y-axis we have the difficulty level of the questions and on the x-axis we have the question numbers. Let's say I am the test taker and the first question I get from GMAT is somewhere in the middle an average question at 500 level and I get this question right. If I get the question right the next question I get would be slightly more difficult than the previous question and that is how the computer adaptive algorithm works so I will get the next question at this level let's assume that I get second question also right so I will climb up the stair and I will get the next question at a slightly higher level uh, let's assume now that I get the next question wrong and I get every other question right and wrong sometimes more than one wrong, sometimes more than one right, and so on. Eventually, I will come to a point where the computer adaptive scoring will look at the difficulty level of the questions I have gotten right and give me a mark of, let's say, 6 60 because the average of the difficulty of the questions I got right was 660. Let's now assume that I started a little bit differently and instead of getting my first question right, I started with getting my first question wrong and I followed kind of the same pattern, but with my first question wrong, I went down here. Then after that, I got my next question right, and then another one wrong, then another one right, two wrong, right, two right. As you can see, by getting approximately the same number of questions right or wrong, I ended up somewhere in a very different scoring range because the average difficulty of question that I was able to solve correctly was somewhere close to 500 rather than 660. And this is what the computer adaptive algorithm means. So as you can clearly see that the scoring doesn't depend on the number of correct questions. For approximately the same number of questions that you get correct, you can get an entirely different score because the scoring actually depends on the difficulty of questions you answer correctly. If you answer higher difficulty questions correct, then you have a better chance of scoring high. What does that mean? So let's take a scenario where you get the first five questions correct and then you can go on your merry way and answer the same amount of questions approximately right. So you will start here. You will get your first question right, your second question right, your third question right, your fourth question right, and your fifth question right. And then let's assume after this, you have gotten so many questions wrong, right? You answer the same amount of questions wrong and you follow a different pattern. Now, as you can see, even though you answered exact same number of questions correctly, because you reached very high level in your first five questions, you scored somewhere higher than where you had ended up previously. And the reason is that the getting the first 10 questions right can take you really high and if you get that high level of difficulty questions right your scores average 
will automatically pull up now does that mean that you should spend more time in answering the first 10 questions it completely depends on how comfortable you are with time management yes it is advisable to spend higher amount of time in the first 10 questions so that you can get it right however what if you are not getting these questions right because as you grow higher in the difficulty even if you spend time but you are not prepared right you will end up getting those questions wrong and dropping down in the difficulty level additionally since you have spent a lot of time on the first 10 questions you would have less time to answer all of these questions remember if you leave any question unanswered in gmat that counts as zero difficulty question and you get heavily penalized for it so the best strategy towards the end of the gmat is if you don't have enough time make sure you complete the test and mark every question by guessing if you don't have enough time to solve them so let me summarize this right yes first 10 questions are more important because you get to a higher level and from there on if you can maintain your accuracy level to about 80 percent you will end up getting a really good score however is it advisable to spend additional time on the first 10 questions sometimes yes if you are confident of picking up speed later on but remember once you have reached at a higher level you are going to continue to get questions at a high difficulty level from that point on which means that if you haven't practiced enough at the high difficulty level question you will quickly drop down as well so so it has to be a good balance between time management and your own comfort level with higher level questions if you are good at solving higher level questions then spending a little bit of additional time on the first 10 questions to get most of them right actually makes sense otherwise it may not and finally towards the end of the exam if you are lack for time then guess and move on and make sure you complete the exam do not leave any question unanswered because it would be considered a zero response and even if you were scoring high difficulty level questions right all of a sudden you might be in a position where you drop down a few points because you left questions unanswered i hope you found this video helpful do not forget to like and subscribe to my channel until next time all the best with your prep